welcome to our service of worship here this morning at Golden Grove Uniting Church. It is so good to have you join us this morning. Wherever you are, uh, it's wonderful to be part of the church community uh, worldwide as well as here in Golden Grove. We are today remembering particularly the Trinity in this Trinity season and our theme this morning is around the fact that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are a community, a community of God that invites us to join their community. And, and the banner behind me, that beautiful image of Jesus' baptism, reminds us of exactly that. We'll find this morning that in a number of our songs, the whole idea of the name of God comes up repeatedly, including our first song in a moment, Blessed Be Your Name. And, and last week we were wonderfully reminded, weren't we, of the name of God, I am who I am. So today we build on that in talking about Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let's pray in his name. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are, you are here. You are here together with us and you invite us to join in worship of you and with you. Lord, we pray that this morning our ears would be open to hear from you, our hearts would be open to learn from you and that we would be moved to love and be loved. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's begin our worship this morning singing a song, one of my personal favourites, Blessed Be Your Name. It's a prayer and it talks about the fact that even when things are going wrong, even when things appear to be very bleak, God is absolutely there in his blessing of us, in his love for us. And we're going to move straight from that song into another song. How can I sing that majesty? So thinking about God's goodness to us and how do we sing that glorious majesty? Let's join together in worship this morning. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to stay. 
start to our worship this morning. How shall we sing that majesty? The next hymn we're going to sing is a, a personal favourite again. Be thou my vision. Another prayer. Be my vision, O Lord of my heart. Nought be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping. Thy presence my light. And if you're sitting on your couch, you might want to stand for this one. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou Thy prayers. 
presence my light be thou my wisdom be thou my true word i ever with thee and thou with me lord thou my great father and thy thy true son thou in me dwelling and i with thee Thou my battle shield, my sword for the fight. Be thou my dignity, thou my delight. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only the first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou art. King of heaven, after victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O Let's, let's pray. Our Father, we come this morning aware of the fact that we have not always put you first in our hearts, that you have not always this week been our true vision, that we have sought ma'am's empty praise, riches, and all kinds of things that would distract us from who you are, who we are, and what is our place and purpose in the world. And so we come in weakness, in need of your forgiveness, and we are thankful for grace that overflows from Father, Son and Holy Spirit this morning. But we pray that we, in this next week, would live more fully, more completely, in that grace, knowing who we are, knowing whose we are. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next beautiful song talks about all of those things too. Our weakness, his strength, our sin, the cross, that makes all of that altogether different. Our falling down and our being picked up. Let's sing, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. You are my strength when I am weak. You are my treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up but be a fool. You are my all in all. Take my 
my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my holy Lord. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my holy As you know, our weekly gazette is up on our website and uh, I urge you to have a look at that because there are important notices uh, in there. And uh, to you you children, if you'd like to have a look at www.hillsong.com, there's some fantastic stuff there for you to have a look at and engage with and enjoy and learn a whole lot more about Jesus through One of the practices that uh, is not part of my church history, not part of my tradition, is the sign of the cross. We normally associate that with Catholicism, but uh, I've only just in these last few weeks understood what that is all about. So when you make the sign of the cross, I've always seen that To be honest, there's a little bit of religious hocus-pocus and thought, you know, whatever, I'm better than that. But it actually is an incredibly powerful statement. So when we say, in the name of the Father, and we touch our heads, and the Son, we touch our chest, and the Holy Spirit, left to right arm, it's kind of a a way of, of declaring both who God is and what he has done in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit that's God and making the sign of the cross is reminding us of the incredible gift of the cross of all that Jesus did on the cross of the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that we might live through him so I'd encourage you why don't you on your lounge room now no one's looking have a go at making the sign of the cross a physical reminder of who God is Father Son and Holy Spirit and what he has done in the cross and uh, look you might find us doing that in the prayers later as well so Father Son and Holy Spirit the sign of the cross look it could be a helpful thing to remind us of who God is and whose we are. So, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, we're going to pray now. We're going to thank God for the offering and we're going to pray for our world who feels like needs him more than ever. But of course, the world has always needed our God. And God has always been there, even though it seems like, and we sung about this in our first song, that can seem like he's absent 
when the world is in chaos, when we're facing a pandemic and we see riots in the streets and we see injustice in our world all over the place and we think, so where is God in all of this? But we know the answer to that, don't we? He's right here. He's right there because our God has come to earth in the flesh. He's one of us, flesh and blood brother. He knows about suffering. He knows about evil. And more than that, he's done something about it. So we're going to talk to him now. And uh, I'm going to lead us in our prayers for all of those things. And there'll be space. And you know what our tradition is. There'll be time for you to to call out the names of people or the situations that God has placed on your heart and to bring them to him. And then we're going to finish off with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we come because we can, because the cross has made Away, The curtain, curtain, the temple has been torn in two and there's now no divide between us and you. How incredible is that? How incredible is it that we can come to you and speak to you face to face? And so we do that and boldly now. We come aware of our weakness and of, of your strength. We come at times overwhelmed by what we see in terms of evil and suffering in our world. Lord, there's so much to talk to you about at the moment. We see uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and in so many parts of the world, it does not seem to be abating. Uh, Lord, we pray for those countries, for those lives, for those situations, that there would be health and healing and wholeness. Lord, we pray for a vaccine so that we can be rid of this dreadful disease. Lord, we see disorder on the streets in many parts of the world and we pray for peace and calm. And At the same time, we pray for justice. We pray that where there is wrong, that it would be righted, that people who need to be brought to account would be brought to account and that justice would reign across this world. Lord, in our own lives, there are those of us who are unwell or who might have relationship difficulties or who just know of situations that need your intervention. And so we bring them to you now. Lord, we know that in grace you hear our prayers that are both spoken and unspoken. And we thank you for all your answers to those prayers. We thank you too for our offerings each week, for your generous giving to us and our opportunity to give back to you. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer, the the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing again to our good, good Father. I've heard thousand stories of what they think you're like and I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm 
never alone You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us Oh, it's love so undeniable I, I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, 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 love you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Good morning, our Bible reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11 to 13. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And our Gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, reading verses 16 to 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. And uh, before I come to the sermon, just an extra notice to add this morning. Uh, To many who've been making contributions of goods to go to the uh, COVID-19 Emergency Relief Centre at the Modbury Uniting Church, Uh, the folks at the Relief Centre have asked to pass on a big and warm thank you to the many members of our congregation who've made contributions. That's through Golden Grove Uniting Church, so pass that on to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week uh, was Trinity Sunday in many Christian traditions, and uh, I didn't happen to be preaching then, so I wanted to take the chance to focus on the Trinity this week. I guess probably the most uh, common definition of Uh, The Holy Trinity, the Christian doctrine of the Holy Trinity, is something like one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, that definition is quite okay, but it's philosophical language, and I don't think it's uh, all that helpful. The Trinity has also been explained at times by using all sorts of different configurations of geometric shapes. Uh, intersecting triangles and circles and so on. There have also been all sorts of odd objects used to try and illustrate the Trinity. Uh, I've heard of electric heaters, uh, vacuum cleaners, and my all-time favourite, a mutant three-legged chicken. But uh, geometry, let's face it, it's mathematics suggests to me that what you're talking about is dead boring. Apologies to any mathematicians out there. And uh, the ridiculous objects used to illustrate the Trinity sometimes suggest to me that, well, what we're talking about is ridiculous and has little to do with real everyday life in the world. However, what we'll see, in fact, is that the meaning and significance of the Trinity is absolutely down to earth, part of every aspect of our lives, and, in fact, thrilling. The Gospel reading from Matthew 28 today, uh, verses 16 to 20, is a very well-known one, uh, and in that, Jesus specifically refers to the Trinity, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and to himself, the Son of God. And we often refer to that passage as the Great Commission because in it Jesus commissions or commits all of his followers for all time to work for bringing uh, people from all nations to be his disciples, his followers. We'll probably touch on that, but uh, what I want to use this passage for today is to focus on the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, uh, which I'd put like this, the, the fact that the Christian God is not a lonely, isolated individual, but is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit who are absolutely unified and yet are a community, actually a kind of family. Paul says in Ephesians 3.14 that he bows his knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth gets its name. And in the Bible, the name of someone is much, much more than just a label that you slap on them. Rather, the name captures and expresses the very nature and being of the person named So when the Bible says that every family is named after God the Father, it means that every family captures and expresses something of who God is and what he is like. But you see, God the Father has never been just on his own because he has always had with him his eternal Son and also the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is what it says right at the start of the Bible in the creation story in Genesis 1. God says, let us, plural note, 
Let us make mankind in our image. So how is God an us, a plural? Well, he is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, an eternal community. And God does make mankind in their image. As mum and dad who have kids, a family. And they are to fill the earth with families. So what God is like, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, is the best family, best kind of family, sharing the best kind of relationships and love and goodness that we can know within families. God's also much more than just a human family, and we'll get to that. But nonetheless, it's true that God is absolutely like everything that is best about family life. So you see, the Christian understanding of God as Trinity has got absolutely everything to do with our real lives and experience because we're all born and live within family relationships and they shape everything about us. God is a family. We are a family. We can perfectly understand that. And it's much, much more interesting than boring geometry and mathematics. For example, have a look at some of our church family and how interesting and full of life they are. Here's Tim. There's Ted and Co. Sarah and Bill. And that's Catherine and Sarah. Lucinda. Ricard. That's Sylvia. Then Mariska and Eden. Geordie and Renee. That community of love, our church family, is a much better illustration of the Trinity. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So we've seen that God is like a human family, but can you see a problem with that? Well, if uh, your family are anything like my family and God is just like that, that could be a little bit scary. What's the extended family Christmas get-together like for you? Do you generally manage to avoid bloodshed? We do, uh, most of the time. Yes, family... Christmases can sometimes be more of a family brawl than a joyous celebration of the Redeemer's birth. So if God, the Father, Son, and the Spirit were just like that, only on a divine scale, it may not necessarily be a good thing to be around them. Uh, but let me just say, for any of my family who may happen to be listening and my family are also very wonderful, don't get me wrong. But the point is, that is where we need to understand that our families are modelled on God. God is not modelled on our families. God is the perfect archetype. Our families are the replicas but the problem with replicas is that plenty goes wrong with them. But the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are not selfish. They're not envious of each other. They don't try and manipulate one another to get an advantage. They don't bear grudges or become hateful with each other. They don't divorce one another. In fact, they're the opposite of selfish. They are other person centred. They put the other ahead of themselves. 
They seek to serve the other first. They lift the other up, give glory to one another, and they listen to and understand one another inside out. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It's all the kind of stuff that we want to happen within our families much more often. But the Father, Son and the Spirit aren't just kind of sitting there in their perfection in order to show us how hopeless our families are. That would just be very depressing. No, they not only created us in their image, they have also redeemed us into their image as well. Paul says that God, this is from Ephesians 1, God chose us in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Isn't that great news? Redemption is possible. Redemption for less than perfect families. Redemption for broken families. Redemption for families that are torn to shreds. In fact, Every family is less than perfect, has some real brokenness, has some serious tears, however pretty they look on the outside. Listen to Karen's story. Karen and her husband, Paul, a pastor, had just accepted an appointment to a large church in a new community Things seem to be going well until Sarah, uh, their daughter, 17-year-old and single, announced that she was pregnant. To complicate matters, Sarah's boyfriend was black and in the eyes of their new church home, biracial relationships were not favoured. This was in the southern uh, United States, you understand. The pregnancy drove a wedge between Karen and her daughter. As tensions mounted, discussions gave way to intense arguments. Karen insisted Sarah give the baby up for adoption. As the birth mother, Sarah was given 15 days uh, to surrender her parental rights. And during those 15 days, God spoke to Karen, her mother, through his word convicting her of her prejudices, her selfishness and hypocrisy. She says, I changed my mind about the adoption. She and Paul spoke and agreed that Sarah's baby would come home to live with them. We saw this as God's perfect will for this precious baby boy and his sweet mother. Months of conflict melted away And all three of them rejoiced at the unexpected outcome. God's grace turned a painful situation into a wonderful blessing. There is forgiveness, healing and hope. God, the Father, Son and the Spirit are on about saving and redeeming lives, relationships and families. Because God is and has always been Father, Son and Holy Spirit, an eternal community, this means that they are love. John tells us this, God is love. We need to think about that a bit. If God was only an isolated individual, He would not be love. How could an individual be love? But the Father, Son and Spirit are an eternal community of love. It is their essential nature. 
And that has many, many wonderful implications that we can't go into today another time. But uh, let's just note for today that this means that they have in themselves all fullness of community. They, they couldn't possibly have more community. And that means that they have never, ever been needy. They have never needed anything in order to be more complete, fulfilled or satisfied than they already are. This means that they didn't have to create. Create us, the world or the universe. Which then has to beg the question, well, why did they? Well, if they didn't need to, the answer has to be just for the fun of it. Seriously, it has to be because the Father, Son and Holy Spirit like doing that kind of stuff. They just wanted to enjoy their love flowing over to be seen and known and enjoyed by others besides themselves, by us, by the universe and everything. Hence, they created and redeemed us and everything. But it's in the redemption that the real greatness of their love for us is truly seen because it cost the Son of God his life to forgive and remove every sin, to get rid of everything that could ever get in the way of us knowing and receiving and enjoying their love. But it's also seen in the stunningly great grace of that love in the way that it comes and it reaches and it includes the least and the last and the lost. Christian teacher and sociologist Tony Campolo tells a story of a visit to Honolulu for a Christian conference. On the first night there, he awoke sometime after three and left the hotel in search of a place to get something to eat. Eventually, he found a tiny coffee shop. He walked into it and sat down. Here is his description of events. The fat guy behind the counter came over and asked me, what do you want? I told him I wanted a cup of coffee and a donut. As I sat there, the door suddenly opened, swung wide, and to my discomfort, in marched eight or nine provocative and rather boisterous prostitutes. It was a small place and they sat on either side of me. Their talk was garrulous, loud and crude. I felt completely out of place. I was just about to make my getaway when I heard one of the women sitting next to me say, you know, tomorrow is my birthday. I'm going to be 39. Her friend responded in a rather nasty tone, so what do you want from me? A birthday party? Do you want me to get a cake and sing happy birthday to you? Come on, the woman sitting next to me said. Why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you it's my birthday. I don't want anything from you. I mean, why should I have a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party in my whole life. Tony Campolo goes on. When I heard that, he said, I made a decision. I sat and waited until the women left and then I called over to the counter to the fat guy and asked him, do they come in here every night? Yeah, he answered. The one right next to me, I asked, does she come in here every night? Yeah, he said, that's Agnes. Yep, she comes in every night. Why do you want to know? Because I replied, I heard her say that tomorrow is her birthday. What do you say we do something special for her? What do you think about throwing a birthday party for her right here in the diner? A cute smile crept over the fat man's chubby cheeks. He answered with measured delight, That's a great idea. I like it. That's great. Well, look, I told him, if it's okay with you, I'll be back here tomorrow at 2.30. I'll decorate the place. I'll even get a birthday cake for her. No way, he retorted. The birthday cake, that's my thing. I'll bake the cake. 
2.30 the next morning, Tony Campolo reports, I was back at the diner. I made a sign of big pieces of cardboard that read, Happy Birthday, Agnes. The diner looked really great. At 3.30 on the dot, the diner door swung open and in came Agnes and her friends. We all jumped up and screamed and we sang, Happy Birthday, Agnes. I've never seen a person so stunned, so shaken. Her mouth fell open. Her friend had to offer her her arm to steady her and I noticed she started to cry. When the birthday cake with all the candles was carried out, that's when she just lost it. She started sobbing. Harry, the fat guy behind the counter, gruffly mumbled, Blow out the candles, Agnes. Blow out the candles. Then he handed her a knife and he ordered her, Cut the cake, Agnes. Cut the cake. Agnes looked down at the cake and then without taking her eyes off it, She slowly, softly said, Look, Harry, is it all right with you if I, I mean, if I don't, what I want to ask is, is it okay if I keep the cake for a little while? Is it all right if I don't eat it right away? Harry shrugged and answered, Sure, Agnes, that's fine. You want to keep the cake? Keep the cake. Take it home if you want. She got off her stool and picked up that cake and carried it out of the diner like it was the Holy Grail. When the door closed behind her, there was stunned silence in the place. Not knowing what else to do, I said, What do you say we pray together? Looking back on it now, it seems more than a little strange that a sociologist would be leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes in a diner in Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning. But I prayed. I prayed for Agnes. I prayed for her salvation. I prayed that her life would be changed and that God would be good to her. And when I finished, Harry leaned over And with a trace of hostility in his voice, he said, Hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of a preacher are you anyway? What church do you belong to? In one of those moments when just the right words came, I answered him quietly. I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. But here's the sting in the tail for the church. Harry thought a moment and then almost sneered as he answered, No, you don't. There's no church like that. In fact, he concluded, if there was, I'd join it. That's the greatness of the gracious love that overflows to us from the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They include the least, the last, and the lost in their eternal community of love. Just uh, to conclude, one of the most famous biblical references to the Trinity would be the one that was read earlier from 2 Corinthians 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's the same emphasis in the final words of Christ in Matthew's Gospel where Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. Again, in John 14, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will come to us, but then he says, and also that he... Christ and the Father will come and will make their home with us. See, the Christian life is about the grace of Christ bringing us into the community, the family of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And then they go with us, sharing their love and goodness with us, in us and through us, as we share that same love and goodness with all the people in our lives. Here's how they do it in our grief. 
during the time of the COVID-19 crisis. This is from Christian writer Jonathan Dodson. In one season of intense grief, I sat on my couch weeping. Hey, can I come by? A friend texted. He came to my home, sat next to me on the couch, put his arm around me and just let me cry. I don't remember anything he said, but I do remember his presence. It was an inexplicable comfort. While our current crisis prevents anyone from breaking away in the middle of the day and coming to sit on our couch, the Spirit and the Son are always present. Wherever we go, the Spirit goes. Even your best friend can't do this. The Spirit is a mobile comforter who takes us by the hand, even in the darkest places. He also awakens us to God's mercies, custom fit for every occasion. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are a divine community of comfort for sufferers. The Trinity possesses all comfort all the time for all afflictions. God is never indisposed and his mercies never run out. He is an eternal fountain of self-giving solace for sufferers. Nothing can hold a candle to him. But another way that the Trinity share their life and love with us is in the church's mission. Uh, The the gut response of uh, many churches at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic was fear. How are we going to survive this? What will happen to our worship? Will our income continue or dry up? These are very understandable responses, but they are essentially inward-looking and selfish. They're concerned with us and our survival But during this time, churches and Christians have found themselves surprised by the gracious love of the Trinity and a new faith and impulse has come to be positively outward-looking and loving toward their neighbours. In the lockdown stage, Australian Christians set up Facebook groups for their street neighbours to keep in touch and offer help with needs that, uh, that any might have. Other Christians uh, letterboxed, dropped uh, flyers in the area, like this one uh, that was used, which uh, has tick, box on, tick boxes on it there for people to fill in for whatever they need, picking up shopping, posting mail, a friendly phone call or prayer. In fact, many... Christians have found themselves reaching out and talking to many more non-Christians than they normally would via telephone or social media or on the internet, offering personal encouragement or practical help or talking about Christian hope. And what's more, they've been surprised by the many non-Christians who've responded positively. And the church as a whole has found God opening up many new and surprising ways to reach the world with the gospel so that there's actually been growth in our mission rather than decline. Where does all that come from? It has only one source, the inexhaustible, generous, other person-centred, outward-looking, gracious love of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's God bringing us into their love, sharing it with us and the world. And they have a universe full of that love yet to show and share with us. As God's people, we need to seize hold of it, drink it in and live it for all we are worth. Amen. We're going to sing again now about the deep, deep love of the Father and the cross that we talked about earlier. Let's sing.
Let me read for us these words of benediction from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and stay with us forever. Amen. And our final benediction song today will be May the Peace of God. Eternal, the King of 
crashes on.